Hi guys. Um, so week six. Yeah, looking great. Awesome. I'm sure you're all in the same boat. So we're going to do a timing exercise today. Um, I have a clicker. I have a ball. I have a very sad dog about two rooms away, so he might start howling. I have a popsicle stick and I have a little toy truck. Um, what we're going to do with these objects. Um, so for some of you um, who are new to working with me. Hi, I'm Melissa. Nice to meet you. Um, if you are, if you've taken some of my classes before, especially early on, you might have known that I was also a fencing um, student and a, com a competition fencer, but I also like used to coach for a little bit when I was much, much, much younger, much, much younger. So, um, but one exercise that we used to do to work on our point control, speed, and accuracy, we would have a friend, a partner, maybe throw a tennis ball straight up in the air, and we, with our weapon, would have to hit it with the point of our weapon. Now, if you didn't want to use a weapon, you could also just like do it as a hand point exercise with your hand, um, just to kind of stay fit and active and keeping your eyes on the prize. We can do a similar thing here with our clicker. So what I want to see today for you guys is a timing exercise without your animal. If you are a clicker trainer, if you're a clicker student or you have a clicker teacher, um, one way to improve upon that is figuring out where your click is happening. Ideally, the second, um, like as quickly to the event happening, that click should happen. And then I want you to try it with your voice and see if you can get the same speed. For some people, their voice might be faster. For some, the clicker might be faster. And this might help you decide which way you should go as, as a, uh, somebody who's training a dog in your home. Um, so both techniques using a verbal marker and a clicker both fall under the umbrella of um, positive reinforcement mark reward training. I'm marking the behavior and then I'm giving a reward. So um, instead of throwing it on the ground because you can't see it, I am going to throw it up against this um, tapestry so you guys can see it. And my timing is going to be terrible because I haven't done this in forever. I'm also not left-handed and that's how I'm throwing this ball. But for the purposes of this exercise, what I would like to see with you guys over time is improvement. You don't have to be great today, but maybe you can be great in a week if you keep practicing. So, so you want to make sure that it's happening after the ball is hitting the wall. And so I'm clicking with my right hand. Now, if I'm throwing the ball with my right hand, and in competition obedience, sometimes I'm doing things where I need to use my right hand, or if I'm doing agility, or if I'm doing disc dogs, or something where I need to be handling with my left hand, uh, with my right hand. So this hand might be busy. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try it with my other hand, and that's gonna probably be <laughs> buckle in. That feet, like you can even see in my body, like I'm focusing so hard on clicking that my whole body came forward to try to catch this ball instead of just reaching out with my dominant hand to catch the ball. But because my brain is also focusing on getting the timing, I'm more um, clumsy in the way that I'm moving. So I'm using, <laughs> I have to use my boob to help me catch the ball. And this is not something that I would normally do. If I'm not using the clicker, I can catch this ball with no problem. So that relates back to our dogs. If you are trying to feed them and they're trying really hard to focus on you or not lose their proverbial shit. If you have a dog who's reactive and is barking or, or sees a barking dog, um, maybe across the street, sees a dog barking, lunging, whatever, and your dog is like, I am trying really hard not to bite, bark, back, Arr! and they turn and they sit at you and you give them a cookie and they're like, Arr! and you have, you have um, that shark from Jaws. <laughs> like, that is what's happening here when I'm trying to, I couldn't even catch that one, when I'm trying to catch, when I'm using so much brain power to try to do something, yes, with my dominant hand, but I'm focused on my off dominant hand. Um, a dog's fine motor skills start to get worse um, and their gross motor skills become a little bit more clumsy so they might be more sharky. That's a way that we can tell that if they're focusing um, it, their stress level. We can see what they're actually focused on. It might not be the cheese in your hand. 
It might be, give me the cheese because I know that other dog is right there. So if you're noticing that your dog is being a lot more shirky, that might also be something just to kind of file away in the back of your head, um, that they might be splitting their focus in a way that they're not used to, and those fine motor skills go away. Um, so I'm gonna have you guys try this. You can do it on the ground. Like I said, uh, you might not be able to see it. No, nope, you won't. Uh, can you see it on the ceiling? I cannot hit this dragon. <laughs> Oh, that was a lot harder. So I'm throwing it against gravity uh, with my right hand. I'm going to try throwing it with my left hand. You stay. So if I don't focus on also catching it, my timing was better with my right hand. If I am focusing on trying to catch it, I'm having a really hard time. So go back and I want you guys to try that um, with a verbal marker, with a clicker, with your right hand, with your left hand, and see how your timing goes. And again, this might be a really good exercise if you can find a spot outside, maybe in a backyard, um, or maybe in one room of the house or a basement. I did not want to do creepy basement time today. Go back to other videos for that. Um, but um, I could give Captain a bone and then I could come in here and try something else. So try it and let me know how it goes. Bye.